Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight we're going to talk about ActiveMQ and Artemis. Uh, Artemis is actually the newest version of ActiveMQ. Uh, ActiveMQ is currently in version 5, and then uh, they have stuffed in a lot of uh, extra features, and then they're, then they're calling this uh, Artemis. And, and when I say they, then it's Apache who, are, who is behind the, um, the ActiveMQ and Artemis uh, project. And the purpose of, of this project is to deliver high, high performance message queuing system so we can uh, yeah so we can have a high volume of messages going through uh, the system and those should then be distributed of course to the right uh, yeah to, to the right consumers that is the purpose of active mq and artemis let me just show you their uh, their web page that web page is right here this is a, uh, this is the uh, active mq web page if you go to activemq.apache.org you will end up right here and you'll and here you can see they have two versions of the active mq the version 5 classic one then they have the artemis one and then at some point when the, they feel that um, now the artemis one has uh, has has enough features then they will actually uh, bump the bump the version and then uh, yeah call call it uh, active mq 6 at least that's how i understand that documentation um, so but let us uh, let us look into what what is it and uh, it is not that complex it's uh, to begin with it, it seems very very complex and that's because there's a lot of features in um, in artemis and active mq but um, yeah when you dig a little bit deeper it is not that complex as it uh, as it sounds First of all, we have one broker, the broker that is the server that is running, uh, yeah, that is the server with uh, ActiveMQ or Artemis that is called the broker. Inside the broker, we are setting up some addresses and addresses. And an address, if you're used to uh, RabbitMQ, then you can see, see an address as a simple version of the exchange. So this is, uh, this is where you would usually target your messages. You would target that to an address. An address can only have, there's only two types of addresses, so it is quite simple actually. One type is Anycast. If it's an Anycast uh, address, then uh, if I send one message to the address, then, uh, and there's two queues uh, inside the address uh, with Anycast, then uh, my message will be sent to both of these queues. So that means if, if you use Anycast, then it's like a point-to-point -point message system. And it, of course, uh, yeah, I, as, as I just said, I can send to multiple queues, but usually it would just be one queue. So uh, if I send a message to, uh, yeah, to, to, to max uh, queue one or whatever address I want to send to, sometimes the address is actually the same as the queue name. And then it's, then it's very, very simple. We can also send messages directly to qualify queue names. But usually we will send it to an address and then that address will then determine should it simply send to multiple queues or just one queue. Then consumers, multiple consumers can actually listen to the same queue. So we can actually have two consumers uh, uh, subscribing to messages uh, on, on queue one right here. And then we can have a third consumer that then uh, subscribes to messages on queue two. That is okay. We can set it up so the message is not being de deleted after uh, one uh, one one consumer has read the message. But it is easier, I must say, if you have a one-to-one -one relation. So if you create one queue and one consumer, then it's, uh, it makes it a little bit easier. At least that's, that's what I think. But it is possible to do the other trick. Then we have the multicast uh, situation. That is, then, then we have a topic like uh, topic.mic. Um, and let's say that I sent, uh, yeah, if I send something to topic.mic, then the, uh, that message will be then be distributed to all the consumers that have subscribed to the topic. Because what happens is that when uh, when this consumer here comes and subscribes for the topic, then a new queue will actually be created. So that means that we will actually have the, a new queue for consumer one here, and then when consumer two comes right here and also subscribes for topic mic, then as a second queue will then be created. That means that we will actually have a consumer two dot topic dot mic queue, and then let us just write that actually. So we will have a consumer one dot topic dot mic. That is one queue. And then the other queue, which again will be dynamically created, will then be named consumer two dot topic dot mic. That is the, these are the two ways of running active MQ, and that, that is why I say it's quite simple actually, because um, yeah, Rabbit MQ, for instance, we have a lot of other uh, possibilities. We can also we can we can use a routing key, uh, etc. We can do something something that resembles this a little bit, because on the queue, 
On a queues, we can actually add something called a queue filter. So that means that we can actually add a queue filter. That means that even though that um, I'm sending message and I expect and uh, the, the, we have a queue with uh, within the, the, the anycast address, then if the queue has a filter that does not match the message, then uh, then it will be filtered out. And maybe consumer one will not get any messages, while consumer two will get a message because the filter for consumer two is give me all, and the filter for Q1 is only give me the one that starts with the uh, B or something like that. Um, so uh, that, is, that is how it works. So we have Q filters, we have addresses, we have a broker, and we have consumers. So it is not that many concepts. It is it is quite simple, uh, logically, when, when, when you look at it. And then, it's of course, it's made for high performance. So it's made for a, a very high volume of messages to be sent through the system. And it's made, of course, to solve the uh, asynchronous uh, communication problem. Uh, um, yeah. So that, that, is, that is the purpose of it. The API is awesome. There are so many protocols that are supported. JMS is supported. AMQP, that is actually the Rabbit, uh, the, the, the RabbitMQ protocol that is used there. Uh, then there's also a core, a core uh, protocol that is used. The core protocol looks a lot like JMS, but it has more features than, uh, than JMS. So this is awesome, and this is this is what I'm going to. Uh, this is what I what I want to dig into the in the, in the upcoming videos. Uh, the first thing is that there is there are no official uh, Docker image for uh, for Artemis and uh, an active uh, MQ. There are some that are not official. Let's go to Docker Hub right here. So if I go to Docker Hub, search for Artemis like this, then there is a lot that comes up. But this one uh, updated. Eight months ago, that's not good, right? Updated two years ago, three days ago. So this is the one, uh, that's one here, uh, 50K uh, downloads, and it has been updated three days ago. That is something like that we, we, we would like to uh, to actually get. But um, it is actually, uh, it is not simple, but it's uh, it's not difficult either to create a Docker uh, a Docker image that, uh, that with an installation of Artemis. You can also search for active MQ, I think there was one that has been updated two days ago, if I don't remember. Yeah, you can see right here, there's one, one million downloads on this one here, actually MQ, Artemis. And uh, in, the, in their own documentation, then they actually say, uh, easy Docker creation, find out more. And then they have some uh, documentation on how to create a Docker image right here. I have taken some of this documentation because I did not think that this, this was easy. I did not, um, it, uh, this was not actually for me. Um, so. I looked at the, at the documentation on how to install um, on how to install uh, Artemis, and then I created my own. And let us look at that. So what I did was I created this Docker file here, and, and I'll, I'll publish it to my GitHub account as usual. And I wanted to use Alpine latest, so I used that one. I just set the maintainer to Mike, and then I'm creating a directory where I place all the stuff uh, that I'm downloading in. Then I'm installing uh, Libio. That is uh, a way to persist, uh, yeah, to make to, to to make it possible to persist the, the messages inside the queue, because uh, a message can be, um, yeah, a, a queue can have the that can have the property that that the messages should be persisted or not persistent and just be in memory. If we if we're persisting the messages, then if we take down the server and restart it, then they will be there. Like, uh, then they will still be there. If if not, then um, then they will um, then they will not be there when we restart the server. So so that's why I installed the bio. I actually did not I did not configure I did not configure Artemis to use it. And then I installed wget because I need wget to download the latest version of. Uh, or not the latest, but uh, the Sulu 14 version of uh, Java runtime environment right here. And then I extract it with tar. It's a tarball. Then I create a symbolic link for my Java right here. And then I run Java version to see that, that, that it actually works. Then I download uh, the Artemis tarball. And this is the location right now. It is version 2. 13.0, so it actually runs in its own version numbering, uh, yeah, numbering system, because uh, ActiveMQ is currently version five. Then I extract the top all again, yeah. Then I create a symbolic link. I'm actually not sure that I use that current uh, directory there, but then I set that Java home environment right there. If maybe I need it, maybe I don't. And now I run something interesting right here because inside the 
Okay, I actually use current right there. So inside the the my yeah, after I extract the top all, then I get a bin folder. Inside the bin folder, there's an uh, an, an, an executable named Artemis. Here I can create a new broker instance, and that is exactly what I'm doing right here. So I'm creating a one, and I'm setting the username to Mike, password to Mike, HTTP host to zero uh, zero zero zero. Then I say require login because uh, I want I want this to be a, a safe server. You can if you want to, you can also say that something like allow, allow anonymous. So you can look it up in documentation. But I would, I would just recommend, even though you're just developing, then add the minus minus require login. And then this false here should not be there. I think I think that's an error because we actually require login. Let me just delete that. Then we have uh, relax uh, Jolo Kia. I actually don't know. I don't remember why I, I added that. There was something in the documentation that said I had to add that. But the last thing I'm adding is the name of my instance, which is Mike, right there. So that means that I will get a broker named Mike, and that it means that it will actually create a folder named Mike. So if I go inside the Docker, then I will have a folder named Mike. Then I'm exposing all these posts right here. When I write expose here, not, uh, if you're not familiar to Docker, nothing happens when you write expose here. This is just for documentation. Then you're saying to the people that uses your image, please map these posts because they are important. The DMS, the, yeah, you can actually see all these uh, all these protocols right here. Stomp, OpenWire, Core, uh, yeah, Hornet, blah, 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 AMQP, uh, AMQPS. Stomp MQ. And right now I'm actually using that port right there when I c connect with my Spring Boot application. I'll not show you this in, uh, in, in this video because I will try to keep the videos uh, short. Then we have an intro point right here and this is the intro point Artemis. And Mike, that is because a new folder has been created named Mike because I, I named the instance Mike and then bin Artemis and then run as an argument to that. that this is my Docker file and um, I then I've created this Docker Compose file right here. Here I built my image from the Docker file, and then I map all the ports. This is where the port mapping happens in the Docker Compose file. The other expose was just for documentation. I cannot say it enough. That was just for documentation. So uh, I've seen many developers uh, sit and waste hours because they said, "Oh, but it is exposed. The port is exposed." And no, it is just documented that it should be exposed at some point, or it should be mapped at some point. This is the mapping under the ports. My Artemis ports. Great. Let us go to a terminal because um, I've, I'm actually inside the Docker instance right here. Artemis Mike, and, and the way I did that, let us just go exit right here. I, I wrote the Docker exec. I have a first, okay, let us start with the first. First, I wrote Docker PS. Then I saw that the, this container ID started with 59. And then I know that I, I can also read a script. My item is one, that is the name of it. But if you're lazy, then you can write uh, Docker exec, and then you can just write minus it for uh, interactive terminal. And then you write 59 because that is just the beginning of the ID. And if there's no other Docker containers running with that ID, then yeah, and then I run to the shell script. Then Docker can actually figure out that I want to be there. So this is my Artemis folder that I created, and we can see there's a lot of stuff here. I, I should of course clean up. I should delete the tar file. I should also delete the DRE tar file right there. Let us go to the mic folder, mic. I have started up the dog already, and uh, the most important thing right here is the broker.xml, broker.xml right here, because if I add stuff, which I actually did, I added uh, addresses, then I added my own address right here, tests123, anycast, and then a queue name. And then any cast, uh, end of any cast, and then address right there. And then we have some other addresses. They were, they, those were already there, some data queues, expiry queues, and, and stuff like that. But isn't that difficult? You, you, you probably ask yourself right now. Yeah, but you do not need to, to fudge the broker.xml file like I did right there. Um, you can also, that's actually also as a tool for doing that. So if I go to bin, then I can write Artemis, and I can write Q. Create, enter, and something like this. And then username Mike, password Mike, destination name, okay. Uh, new cool Q1, address name, enter to so use the same name. Yes, I just press enter. Anycast, yes, it should just be anycast. 
durable, and this is what I said about durable. If, if I say durable, I'll just say yes this time. That means if I restart and, and I, if, I, if I have volume mapped, which I have not, if I have volume mapped the right folders, then um, uh, then then I will actually keep my messages even though I'm restarting my server. Perch on blah blah blah. Perch on no consumers. No, it should not purge it just because there's no consumers. Maybe they will come back later on. Auto create addresses. Yes, do that. And then I got my queue right there. Then I have my browser. I've already started up the management console. The management console is on port 8161, uh, which is right here. Then I then I get this management console. I log in with Mike Mike. And then I can press addresses like I've already done right here. And let me just press, let me just refresh it. Then we have new cool queue right here. Awesome, right? Awesome. I can also, so this, I'll just zoom in a bit. New queue, uh, new cool queue right there. Queue count, and I can also press, uh, I can also press queues right there. And then if I got any messages, then I could have, uh, yeah, I could actually have read the messages. But uh, let's stop now. I will continue making more videos about the ActiveMQ and Artemis. It's an interesting subject, I must say. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.